Welcome to the Send More Offers Real Estate Show with Brandon Barnes, showing you how to do wholesaling deals consistently without having to go on seller appointments. Learn the key tips and strategies that Brandon's students use to find deeply discounted properties that are pennies on the dollar, all while avoiding wear and tear on their vehicle, body, and freedom. Whether you're looking for your first deal or your next deal, it's time to send more offers with your host, Brandon Barnes. Hey, Brent, how's it going, man? So good. Good to see your face again. I know. Like, I'm always excited uh, for any chance I get to catch up with you. Um, you've been, you know, very, very helpful along the years. Uh, and I know you're helping a lot of folks uh, do exactly what you do, which is take over the world by one parcel at a time, <laughs> flipping land. Let's what go. are you doing let's, today? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Same as I do every day, devising a plan to take over the world. I love it. I love it. So how is land buying going for you? <clears throat> it's going good. I'm, I'm finding deals that I have not found in the past, I don't know, uh, seven years. We're actually finding land deals that are going in pre-foreclosure or list pendants or notice of default. Uh, I checked one of my areas this morning and that has not been a thing in these past several years and it's already happening. Uh, so that's opening the oppor the door of opportunity um, as well as I'm seeing some of these land or land sellers, I should say, get a little realistic with uh, the slowdown and the building around them. So um, mm. it's just creating more opportunities because for a while there, it was really a seller's market for land, you know, same, same for houses too. I assume it's very, they, they run similar tracks. Yeah, for sure. Let, let's break that down. When you say that, um, there were more, uh, becoming available. So what did you use to target in your business specifically for landowners? How were you finding those opportunities? And now talk a little bit more about that opportunity that's being created and why it's been created. Yeah. So I still find them the same way, you know, I, well, let, let's, let's break it down. Like, let's just say that, um, you're about to get started and, or I'm going into a new market. Let's just say I'm going to look at Redfin and I'm going to go to the solds. I want to see what has sold in the past seven days. And I'm going to hover over an area. I mean, roughly about two, at least around two hours from where I currently live. Cause I want to be able to drive to that land, especially if I'm brand new to this business. Now, do I do it now? Not always. Um, I do. I do enjoy seeing it, um, but I'm going to look about a two hour radius of where I currently live and look at what's sold in the last seven days. And if there's nothing sold, I'm going to bump it out to 30 days and if nothing sold in 30 days. I'm going to go to 90 or three months. And that's going to show me where demand is at, where where people are actually buying land today at today's interest rates, today's prices, because, you know, real estate doesn't slow down. We do. We get our hands burnt on the stove because in 2008, uh, we're afraid. We don't want to ha that to happen again. Builders start to pull back. So we need to kind of see where the areas are in demand because things do shift. Things things move around a little bit. Um, so that's number one, finding where, where the land is selling at in demand. And then two, once I find that little cluster pattern, almost like when you're, when you're sighting in your gun or something like that, shooting a target, that red bullseye, I'm looking for a bunch of solds in one area. And then I'm going to click on each and every one of those. I'm going to take like 10 minutes to click on them and see what the sold price was and what size parcel. And I'm going to, I'm going to see what size parcel is in most demand. Say mm -hmm. for instance, if I click on 10 of them and it's half acre, half acre, half acre, half acre, quarter acre, half acre, half acre, one acre, half acre. Okay. I know half acres in demand. Right, um, right. So that's the one I'm going to go for first. And then I'm going to go prop stream and I'm going to pull a list of landowners in that area. I'm going to draw the little, use the little draw tool and pull a list of landowners that own a half acre parcel of land in that area. And they're going to get a very specific mailer, what we call the land offer letter. We talked about it on your uh, the last time I was on here with you, right. um, a very specific offer for their land. So that hasn't really changed other than the fact that we're just, you know, going with demand because I never want to get a piece of land and not be able to sell it because there's no demand for it. Right. And so, I mean, for the folks, and I know uh, everybody <clears throat> listening are loyal Sinmar offers, real estate show listeners, uh, but we were talking uh, and I interviewed Brent uh, way back in episode 76. So go check that out. He literally broke down everything uh, about his process, about his backstory, how he got into finding land 
and you know being able to sell land on creative terms uh, as well as cash deals um, is an amazing story. Uh, but just so that you understand, just like we are typically going after single family homes and getting a property under contract and then either purchasing and you know reselling immediately to another buyer, which is wholesaling houses, he can do so the same thing with land. He just goes about it a slightly different way with that land offer letter. And so, you know, now it, it sounded like, you know, once, you know, when we last spoke, you know, a year ago when it was so hot and it was a seller's market and folks wanted a million bajillion dollars for their one acre <laughs> parcel, right? <laughs> uh, they, now things are changing. And uh, aside from um, these landowners becoming more realistic, uh, realistic. What are some of the other opportunities uh, that you mentioned, uh, like a list pending? What What does that mean, and what's happening that's creating these opportunities for us to buy land? Yeah, absolutely. So list pendants is a very, very small portion of it, but uh, you, I'm I'm actually keeping an eye on several of my areas, and what list pendants is is when someone is not paying their mortgage payment on that, and it's usually larger parcels of land. Um, someone's not paying their mortgage uh, payment on it and they get a list pendants notice or a notice of the default because eventually they are going to bring that loan and foreclose on it. So we usually try and get in touch with that landowner, just like a house owner, uh, and see if we can help them solve that problem. Um, that's just creating more opportunity uh, because, you know, when buyers or I'm sorry, when sellers kind of like you just mentioned when they were getting a, a gajillion dollars for their land, it wasn't going in foreclosure. Um, some of these guys have missed the boat on building to where now the building is slowing down. How do we know it's slowing down? Because less permits are being pulled, less new construction permits are being pulled. Uh, you've got like buyers canceling contract with DR Horton. So now these parcels are sitting and nothing is like ground is not being broken. And then they eventually stop paying the mortgage payment. And now we come in and see, okay, you know, what do you owe on this? Can we take over that loan? Can we do a subject to existing financing? Or, you know, can we can we buy it at a massive cash discount? Because right now we've got to get a bigger discount because things are going down in value, but it's 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 allowing us for creativity. And then there's a whole other side of selling it or finding another builder that's ready to go, or you know, a real estate investment trust that wants to sit on it for 10 years or a land banking trust where land banking, these guys are buying this stuff and just sitting on it and waiting for the market to go back up. Love it. Love it. And you know, that's great that, you know, you're able and you're tapping in and finding out what's going on in these areas. And I think that we all should, you know, as, as, as you're getting into this business early on, it's just, Hey, finding a deal, finding a deal. But you know, as you've been around the block and you're, you're doing deals and you have a family and a team to feed, right? Um, it, it's time to up your game, right? And then start to look at trends and economics and analytics uh, and, you know, maybe going to the, the, the develop, housing and development meetings. Um, how are you finding uh, specifically, if you, if you want to know, you know, how many permits are being pulled uh, for the developers, um, you know, do you have a way to go down and, and find out those details? Are those things yeah. online? Well, yeah, I mean, you, a lot of these counties do have this online, um, but the fastest way is call your regional building department, your regional building department and ask, Hey, where do I see the new permits? How do I, how do I see what new permits are being pulled in this, this area? Um, and they'll direct you, well, we have this online or, Hey, we can give you the number right now. Um, right. it just depends what office you're calling. Uh, so that's that's the easiest recommendation to have is just call your county or your regional building department. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, and I've also heard of, there are some different, you know, associations of builders, um, uh, you know, new construction, like, um, you know, they have like their own real estate meetings and stuff like that. Do You ever tap in with some of those guys that, you know, are, you know, they have like a listing or an index of all the folks that are building in the area. Are those some of the resources that you use uh, as you're trying to do more deals and improve yeah. the business? It's another thing you can see on many of the regional building websites who is pulling these permits 
because once you see that and then it's okay this this builder keeps pulling these permits and then you gotta go and look okay is he the owner of the land as well or is he just the developer or the builder because there's usually there's an owner and then there's a developer and you know those are sometimes different but then you can go and see okay here's the address you can look it up on your assessor's website and be like okay, you know, Acai Builders or Acai, you know, Investment Corporation owns 125 lots in this county. And guess what? Acai might be a little behind on the boat and they still have 125 lots that they've paid impact fees on. And now mm. I'm driving by this land and I see these, these, uh, these pads have been built up and, you know, they haven't laid the concrete yet but they have the footers out and the wood where they're about to pour it but there's there's knee high grass on these pads that is a bad sign you know yeah. for the builder good yeah. sign for land investor <laughs> right 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 and you know uh, here locally where you know we usually will reach out to what planning and zoning is this is this a um the like the regional building department is that, you know, for your your local government's kind of planning and zoning or is there another you know uh, meeting or a group of uh builders that you also reach out to? Uh that's two separate things. Planning and zoning is usually the actual planning of what this, you know, area is going to look like 20 years from now. Um cuz they they keep a control. Okay, this area is for single family homes, this is for mobile homes, this is industrial, this is commercial, blah blah blah. Now, regional building is where the permits go through and where you apply for these permits to actually build um, and, you know, apply for your mechanicals permits for like air conditioners and, and water, you name it. So it's, it's two separate things. Um, now, we can definitely get way sidetracked. That's not the only people I sell land to, though. You oh, know, you sure. can that's just one of the many people. You know, you can find others just that want to buy a piece of land. Like I just got a call this morning from a friend of mine that he does dirt work he builds foundations and he he builds roads and he he uh he builds uh uh driveways and he's like brent i'm looking for a piece of land that i can go ahead and start uh you know building the driveway and the road and planning a hedge so i can sell it as an improved lot and a house pad on it build to suit type thing so that's another buyer and you can find all sorts of buyers people that want to one day maybe build their dream home or their cabin on places like craigslist and even the neighbors, the neighbors always love to buy the land next to them if right. they can afford it, which is where the monthly payments come in. And a lot of times the neighbors might, might be coveting that land. They might be looking at it every time they leave their house, but they're never willing to go on and look on the assessor's website and see who owns it and maybe go and skip trace it with batch skip tracing and call them because they don't know about this stuff. Yeah. You know, they just do their regular jobs. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, that that's great because I, I want to say – um, you know, I think it's helpful to kind of break down some of the ways that you can learn more uh, about what's going on in your area and kind of go towards the areas that are presenting opportunities. Um, so I'm glad that you were able to break that down, because I think as a land buyer, you start to, you know, rub shoulders with uh, more developers and folks that are in you know, similar trades uh, and learn things that way. Uh, but one thing that I've, that's always jumped out to me is that you've always had a very diverse group of buyers literally selling to, you know, mom and pop or vacationers, big family <laughs> folks that are wanting to go and ride their ATVs or go camping uh, and reaching out to them in, you know, some of the, the most common ways, Facebook, Craigslist um, and, and, and doing things like that. Can you briefly just for the folks that, you know, and I know they're going to go back and listen uh, to the, our previous episode um uh, episode 76 but when you're creating notes sometime to make the land lots more available you know how simple is it you know to, to actually create a note is this because you've purchased it uh personally with your funds private money and you're just drawing up a doc uh, you know on the back of a napkin yeah. or is there a formal process <laughs> going, you know in front nothing of closing attorney we use napkins for nothing in this house. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually, I actually just signed on the dotted line um, for a closing yesterday. And as soon as we uh, get off this call, I've got to wire um, my 300 bucks. Um, uh, it's actually, a, and I've got it broken down on the board. I don't, you want, do you want me to show it? I don't, I don't know if this yeah, uh, let's, let's video will break, air. Right. Let's break down this deal. So the reason why I had it on this board, I did a Facebook live and then I broke it down for my land shark students yesterday. But um mm -hmm. So we mailed this land offer letter, the LOL, 
um, about a year ago, actually, to a landowner in, in Colorado. And the land is actually worth about 90000 So we sent her a land offer letter for 40000 So a little bit less than 50 cents on the dollar. Well, she signed it and sent it back. How do we find her? We we pulled that list on PropStream of landowners in that area because I like the area because there's land selling. It showed me there was demand. Well, she signed it and sent it back. We started a research in the title and the title company is like, hey, is there a mobile home title? And they're like, whoa, this is vacant raw land. No, it's not. Look it up again. So come to find out, we look on Google Earth and sure enough, there's a like a not a very nice mobile home. There's a, a <laughs> mobile home on there. And we're like, darn. So we call the seller back. She goes, yeah, my son lives in it. Mm. Oh, geez. We thought we were buying vacant raw land. Like, but okay, let's keep moving forward. So I started looking up what, what three acre parcels were selling for in the area with mobile homes on it. So it's like 140,000. But here's the thing. This, this mobile home was so old. No bank is going to loan money on that mobile home. So we still went through with the purchase of $40,000 and we talked to the son that's living in the mobile home and said, Hey, do you want to stay in this thing? We'll sell it to you. Um, it's worth about 150, but we'll sell it to you for 90,000 on payments. And, and all your listeners are probably like, well, why didn't the son just buy it from the mother? Because the son didn't have 40 grand and that's what the mom wanted. She mm. wanted 40 grand cash. She didn't want she didn't want $900 a month. She didn't want payments. She wanted the cash because she's going to go blow it. Well, we had to get through some <laughs> broken chain of title. Um, when her and her husband purchased it, something was messed up. Then her husband passed away a few months ago. So we went through oh, probate, took care of all of it. We now purchased it yesterday for $40,000. And the son is doing a $5,000 down payment today. That's the notes you referred to. That guy is now going to promise to pay me. Uh, roughly $946 a month. And so here's how it worked. I borrowed $40,000 from my mother-in-law at 9%. So I didn't have to use any of my own funds except for that 300 bucks. And that was just paying the title company to draw up all the paperwork. So I'm going to wire 300 bucks. And I really wish the title company would have just charged my lender. So I don't have to get right. on the phone and wire and spend 25 bucks. Yes, I'm cheap. I don't want to spend $25 <laughs> per wire because, you know, as our income grows, our revenue grows, guess what? So do our expenses. So uh, business owners true. hear that. <laughs> so that's a gem. Here's the breakdown though. And I'll keep my mic close by. Um, the, the buyer's paying $5,000 down. He's going to have a note, a mortgage of 85,000 at 9%. His payment is going to be 923.23 per month. And then we charge a $20 note service fee. So technically we're collecting 946 23 per month and this is the loan we got we're paying 830 a month for that so after we pay the 830 we only keep about 115 dollars and 90 cents my forty thousand dollar loan will be paid off in five years so that 115 thousand or 115 dollars will increase that we're keeping it after five years let me spin this board around really quick love it and this is a, we thought this was a land deal. So it's just, you know, sometimes we get a little bonus and there's a mobile home on it with a well and a septic. So let, ah. let me do the breakdown. And I think my little wheel just fell off. So hopefully it doesn't fall over. So I collected $5,000 today, or actually we're collecting it today. The day's not over. And that $115 a month for 60 months, that turns into $6,954, $6,900. And then after that five year notes paid off that I owe my mother-in-law at 9%, I'm still going to have eight years left because we gave this guy a 13 year mortgage. He's going to pay us for 96 more months and we'll keep the whole 946 a month. Uh, and that turns into $90,000 or 90,838. So if you add all three of those up, the 5,000 down today, the 6,900 over the first five years, and then the last eight years and 90,000. Now this is future. We're going to collect $102,792 on this one land deal. And a lot of people like I've had two people ask now, Oh, did you do a prepayment penalty? That way you can guarantee to get that 102,000. Heck no. Why would I do that to that guy? If he wants to pay it off early, let him pay it off early. But here's the thing. He's buying it for, from us for 90,000. We're buying it for 40. So 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. <laughs> I'd rather collect my $50,000 in profit to today rather than wait 13 years for 102,000. So right. that's it. just one land deal. 
Love it. <laughs> I um, like that. And, then, and, and so what you did, I mean, um, setting it up that way where, you, you know, the payments were one way for the first five years and then different for the, the next eight, uh, was that just time to be able to, um, you know, give him an opportunity to start to pay a higher amount? No, he's going to pay the same amount for 13 years, but I have my lender. I've got to pay 830 a month, so I get it paid off in five years. So if I had that deal to do over again, I'd pay my lender like 6% on 40 grand and I collect 12% on 90 grand, but it's my, my mother-in-law. I want to, I want to hook her up too. And, yeah. uh, so that's why I, after I've collected 946 from my buyer, I'm going to send the 830 to my mother. That way mm -hmm. she's paid off in 60 months. So there's only $115 and 90 cents left over each month until she's paid off then i keep the whole 94 946 23 a month for the next 96 months or eight years until my buyer pays it off ah, that's amazing and look um have you had you know i'm, I'm sure you're going to run to it or, or if you probably already have um where you have someone that's you know defaults on their payments um you read is, my mind is the process for you know either foreclosing and quiet title all that stuff is it easier on land than it may be on a house or is, is it less expensive? Yeah, way easier on land. Um, for this situation, we have the, a contract for deed. So it would be a cancellation of contract for deed. We do a certified letter. Now, granted, we're going to do multiple texts and phone calls and emails to get them caught up before we do that. Sometimes we just throw it on the back of the loan. It does happen. Um, when we have a house deal, we check pay stubs. I usually send them through my mortgage banker to make sure that they can eventually afford it if they're going to refinance later on. Um, but for land, I usually just get the down payment and the dock fee and the monthly payment. And if they ever stop paying the monthly payment, we either do a loan modification with them um, or we can take back the property. Uh, the other day I bought a piece of land uh, back from one of my buyers. Uh, it was the second time he would have need a, needed a loan modification over the last five years. Um, he originally was paying me three, three ninety one, not three ninety one a month, three hundred ninety one dollars a month. Then he went down to eighty dollars a month a couple of years ago, and then he called me again. And I was like, "Man, you've right. got about five thousand dollars into this parcel. I'll give you four hundred dollars if you just want to cancel this contract today." He said, "Let me think about it." He called me back a minute later. He goes, "Yeah, let's just do it. I don't want the land anymore." So <laughs> you know, you want to? It, it's it's. Terror, and I, I really only paid like a thousand bucks for this parcel of land. I've already collect, I've already made profit on it. Right. So I wanted to get him something at least. But uh, and then some people will, you know, I say about one out of fifteen. This happens to one out of fifteen land parcels that I sell on a on a mortgage or a note. One out of fifteen will kind of break communication with us and eventually stop paying us because they're embarrassed most of the time because they lost their job or the income, and we'll eventually just have to take the land back because of no communication. Got it. Got it. Well, no, that helps. And that kind of rounds out uh, folks expectation of this investment vehicle um, It's still very attractive. And I know that you've done some great things for your business and for your family. Um, but go on and just really quickly give us uh, your feel for an outlook you know, going forward. What do you have your team focused on? Where do you see the opportunities? Are you worried about anything? You know, what, what, what's going on? What is your outlook for 2023? Yeah. Right now, my team is just focused on, so a lot of, we're doing a lot longer loans. Uh, we're doing 30 year mortgages on some of these parcels of land, but uh, really we keep it super simple. Um, I've got a very small team. Um, we have scaled down, we're tightening our belt and we're really kind of just maintaining um, to where we just, every week we add another parcel of land sold because the, trust me, this is like such a blue ocean strategy. Like there's no sharks in the water yet, except for the land sharks. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, I've got, uh, I, I don't run my team. I don't stand behind them with the whip. I only ask for one thing. Let's sell one parcel of land a week and let's add $250 a month to our passive income per week. Because here's the thing we do that for four weeks straight. Now we add, we just added a thousand dollars a month. We do it for two months straight. We just added $2,000 a month. We do it for three months straight. We now have an additional $3,000 a month on top of what we were already collecting. And I'm fine doing a 30-year mortgage as long as someone can afford the payment because really we're asking our buyer, what type of payment can you afford? Because here's the thing. If you, do a, if you look at an average you know, $200,000 mortgage 
at 6% interest over 30 years, someone's going to pay back over 430 grand. Mm. That's not 6% interest. That's not, no, that's nowhere near 6% interest, but that's how the bank set it up. And there's a reason why the banks are the biggest, prettiest buildings in every city and every state is because they've got it figured out. They know something about money. Um, so unfortunately I can't borrow from the federal reserve at 0% interest, but I can do a positive arbitrage or I can flip a couple parcels or assign my contract like we do with houses, you know, get the property under contract and, you know, make a quick $25,000 assignment fee and then take that 25,000 and buy a piece of land for 25,000 and sell it for 75,000 mm. at 12% for 30 years. And then every time I do a deal, you know, and we do the 30 year mortgage or a five year mortgage or a 20 year mortgage, I don't have to go back to work the next day. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not a reset it's every building. time. It's building on itself. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and, and last thing, just kind of uh, your keys for success, uh, which you've built an amazing business. I know we were talking about uh, waking up early and, and, and making sure that you're committed to, to building a, a strong team. Um, you know, what are some of the other things that uh, you would advise for somebody listening right now that says, hey, I, I want to have the level of success um, passive income, uh, you know, amazing team, a great life, right? H how can they, you know, uh, get, you know, down this path of you know, having a team that's working without them? Yeah. I'm, so wake up every day and take consistent action, you know, get it done early. A lot of people make a to-do list and they check off the easiest things. Um, like this morning, one of the first things I had, I had to get done was, it was, it was weighing on my, my, like shoulders was I had to send an email with um, a very crucial conversation, a tough conversation I didn't want to have today, but I got it off my plate before 10 a.m. this morning. And if I accomplished nothing else today, at least that was done. Same thing when I was building my land business. If I did not get at least 40 offer letters out that day, 40 or postcard, your thing might be postcards or some people might be text messages or some people might be cold calls. If you don't get that minimum amount, Either you're doing 80 tomorrow mm. or you shouldn't go to bed tonight. You know, I had some tough love with one of my students the other day. He was like, oh, I can't pay my bills. I'm a, uh, my wife doesn't know I spent this much money. And, and I was like, what time do you go to bed at night? He's like, oh, I go to bed at like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, what time do you get up in the morning? He was like, I, I usually get up about seven. I was like, brother, you're sleeping way too much. You've got some <laughs> debt to pay. So, and there's a season, you know, Tom Kroll says there's a season of hustle. Well, the faster you want to get out of that season, the, the, the more you better use your time uh, better to serve you and your family and others. You know, delete Facebook off your, your computer, uh, you know, get rid of Netflix and sell your TV. And uh, it's just I could tell you, like, it's just when, when I was starting this business in my land business in 2016, you know, sleep was not a priority. Only my children, <laughs> my wife and you know, doing money making activities, not learning on YouTube, but taking action and, you know, mailing landowners, taking phone calls from landowners and selling land. Love it. Love it. And that's kind of one of one of the one of the other things that I wanted to get to uh, just with this strategy. You know, you are leading the Land Sharks uh, coaching group, right? Um, this is a potential strategy that folks can you know, go after, like you said, it's a blue ocean. There's plenty of opportunity there. Folks can maybe use this as a, um, you know, a launching pad for their real estate investing business and starting to do more deals more consistently. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the land sharks uh, coaching program and, and why people should join. And then some of the updates that you've done to it. Yeah, absolutely. So the land sharks, um, we, I've created a, a uh, course of videos or a series of videos, very short videos that you can you can eat on like fun size, bite size things, and it's to take action. It's actually action steps. You know how to pick the the uh, hot demand area of land, how to pick the demand size, how to pull that list, how to find the right owners of land that want to sell to you, and then how to get it under contract at a crazy massive discount, and then how to sell this and make money, either flipping it quick to build your bank account. 
uh, to pay those credit cards off, whatever it might be, or to and then eventually build that seller financing stream of income so you can quit your job like I wanted to back in 2016 when I would go to work crying because I was preparing for my third deployment and I was going to leave my family for another nine months. Um, so I, I had a huge why um, to get this built. And that's the way the course is set up. And then, you know, we do three support calls a week. Um, I have a and support calls. That's where we celebrate wins, celebrate land deals that have been done and breakdown deals and deep dive deals and share screens. Um, and it's there's so much more. But uh, that's not what this podcast is about. But uh, if you if you want to head on over to the landsharks.com, fill out the form, schedule a call. But you've got to mention the send more offers real estate or Brandon Barnes so we can make sure we give you the the uh, family discount, the Rhino discount, as well as um, I know where these where these amazing people are coming from. Absolutely love it, man. And look, there's, you know, there's a select group of real estate investors and colleagues in this business that I truly, truly love and trust. And uh, you're one of those guys. I know you're going to take care of every person that comes and reaches out uh, because you did so for me. And, you know, it, it was awesome, um, you know, just learning from you and working with you over the years and, you know, sharing good stuff between each other. So. I appreciate it. Look, guys, um, as always, um, I want to invite you over to sendmoreoffers.com. There's nothing for sale, just some amazing content, uh, opportunity to book a call, uh, join the mailing list, and see some amazing clips from these great guests that you're listening to on the podcast. So make sure that you head over to sendmoreoffers.com. Brent, let folks know where they can follow you, uh, where they can reach out. I know you said the website. Say it again, and, and where can folks follow you? Yeah, the landsharks.com is the website. Uh, you can follow me at Brent, or I'm sorry, on YouTube, Brent Bowers, or uh, Instagram, Brent L. Bowers. Love it, love it. Well, guys, look, this is what I'll, all I have for you today. Um, I really, really appreciate, Brent, you uh, breaking down everything that you guys have going, what's going on in the market, how folks can find out more information in their local area, and then how these creative deals work and how you structure them. Uh, it's always great talking to you, Brent, man. I, I appreciate you. I'm going to let you get out of here. Uh, and, folks, as always, send more offers, do more deals. Brent, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. God bless. Thank you. Later. Peace. That's all for this episode of the Send More Offers Real Estate Show with Brandon Barnes. But we know you're craving more knowledge to get yourself ready for that next deal. To schedule a call with Brandon to learn more about how to do deals consistently without seller appointments in a repeatable way, be sure to visit us at sendmoreoffers.com. And be sure to tune in for the next episode of the Send More Offers Real Estate Show.